Hi, I'm Steve Van Meter. Welcome to your Monday night premiere where we take about 15 minutes every Monday and Wednesday night to take a look at the stock market, which really doesn't make a lot of sense right now. But today it's actually kind of logically making sense because what we've seen is the market continue to rise on hopes that this trade war was going to end. But it wasn't going to. See, a lot of people don't understand this just isn't about China buying our agricultural commodities or you know buying more of our stuff or us you know getting into their country a little bit deeper with our corporations and protecting their intellectual property. Here's the bottom line. Corporations can protect their intellectual property. They choose not to. They, they really are. I mean, there are ways to do it. They're choosing not to do it. And they've been doing this for a long time. So it's not new. It's not about trying to buy in our ags, even though they, they've threatened now over the weekend. You know, we may not buy any more, you know, agricultural commodities. Well, well, one, they weren't buying many to begin with. They've been, you know, going around the world, scraping up every last bit they can buy from anyone else. But they've got problems. We talked about the African swine flu that is just rampant throughout China. I heard this weekend there was a case reported in Hong Kong, which means if it is found there, guess what? They're going to have to kill, you know, all those hogs. And then they have the army worm that's hitting the, um, the soft commodities. Look, China's not in a position to turn us away for food. We know that. Then there's a reason. You know, and, and again, this is going to be you know, my opinion only, you know, whatever you think about the Trump administration, let's just let that aside. But let's talk about what any president wants to be. They want to be considered a great president. And you can do that in a lot of ways. You, you, you know, you can uh, end a war. Uh, you can do some, you know, massive, you know, humanitarian effort. You can do um, something big like Social Security or a big infrastructure project. I mean, there's a lot of things you can do. But one of them that people seem to remember for a long time is taking out a big enemy. And our biggest enemy right now is not North Korea. I mean, I know a lot of people are so worked up. But look, if, if one of the poorest countries in the world is a threat to the richest country in the world, you know, we have a problem. I mean, North Korea is just not a really a threat to us. Yeah, maybe they could do a little bit of damage, but they wouldn't get too far. And Russia's not really a threat, even though, you know, Putin is who Putin is. But they're certainly not the superpower they were when I was a child. Our, the, the biggest threat to our country, bar none, is China. It, and I don't know why people can't see that, but that is the case. They are a big, strong country, and they want to be numero uno again. They were up until we showed up. You know, if you don't believe me, go read some history books. They were the country to be. And then these, these, this country out of the middle of nowhere shows up and takes the throne. And they want it back. This trade war is not, a, like I said, it's not about all those other issues. This is a power struggle between two of the, if not the strongest nations in the world. And sometimes when you're you know, in power politically, you have an opportunity to knock off you know, the second person in line. Because you know the third, you can look back and like, oh, well, the, the, they're, not, they're not even close. And I believe this is what we're trying to do because their uh, president, President Z, is elected for life. That's a long time. And if you can topple this power structure in an innocent way by using tariffs, well, that, that might actually help a president be considered great. Maybe it will, maybe it won't. But all I want to tell you is there's something much deeper going on here because China's come back uh, after walking out Friday and said, look, these are the things we won't do. No surprise, because they can't. I, I've said that before, can't do it. They said, look, give us some terms we can work with and tell us how much of your stuff we need to buy so we can do this. Now, if we wanted to make a deal, they're kind of telling us this is what we can do. I mean, when someone pretty much says, you write the deal, you tell us what we got to do and we'll we'll go along with it as long as you know these other items here are not touched because you know we know what they can and can't do that's a that's a pretty bold statement in a negotiation it tells you that their hand is weak and tells us that you know we're doing some damage and yes we're going to sacrifice the growth of our economy we are going to risk going into recession over this uh, we were headed there anyways this would only just kind of you know push the apple cart over if you will and uh, 
you know, the stock market reacted to that. The content of this video is provided educational information only and not intended to provide investment or other advice It shows not to be construed as recognition or solicitation of only a security financial product instrument or participate in particular trading strategies. If it was paired by Stephen Van Meter on own personal passive opinion express video, that one do not reflect the view of Alice Financial Advising or Stephen Van Meter Financial. So why did I go through all that? To tell you it's not going to end tomorrow. A lot of people think, oh, well, uh, you know, we'll, we'll go flying over there to, to China and, we'll, you know, we'll get it wrapped up. Oh, Trump's going to meet with, you know, with, with Z uh, at the G20 meeting in June. They'll get something done. Look, China's not going to make a trade deal while they're on Japanese soil. I can promise you that. That's not going to happen. So, yes, there's going to be talk going on, but the reality is there's a much bigger game being played. And for anyone who thinks this is ending anytime soon, it's not. But what we do know is our tariffs are now in place. China has fired back. They're, they're going to increase tariffs uh, to 25% on $60 billion of imported uh, goods from the United States. That will be in effect on June 1st. And now the ball's back in our court. You know, President Trump said he would you know, put a 25% tariff on over uh, the last 300 billion of their imported goods. Today, he kind of backed off that a bit. We'll see. I think he's going to go through with it. I think he has no choice because again, you know, when you see this big enemy, which we consider them at a weak point, what do you do? You go for the throat. I mean, I'm, look, I'm not saying right or wrong. I'm just saying, I think this is what's going to happen. And the bottom line is, I think people that are betting on a stock market going higher from here are making a very dangerous move. Because when we look at the data, virtually most investors are, do not have any U.S. Treasury bonds in their portfolio. And if they do, they don't have enough to hedge the downside of the market. They're, they're not hedged volatility. They're very long and deep in stocks, as is institutional money managers, pensions, hedge fund managers, everybody. And door starting to close. So let's take a look at how uh, hedge funds are positioned in the market and then look through the charts because, of course, there are some interesting stuff. So we're going to the website Hedgeopia on the weekend. Uh, this usually gets posted. Um, I see it on Twitter Saturday morning when he posts his post there, and then we can take a look at this. So what is this telling us? This is telling us how hedge funds, hedge funds are considered what is called the dumb money. And why are they considered dumb money? Because the smart money are the people that actually know what's going on. They are, you know, titans of industry. They, 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 they are the ones that are making all the decisions, okay? They know. So when we look at this, the opposite of where is where the smart money is. So if the dumb money is betting that interest rates are going higher, the smart money is betting interest rates are going lower. So smart money has been buying uh, U.S. Treasury bonds, you know, all along through here. Looking at the long bond, that was a 10-year treasury, 10-year. So looking at the 30-year, they're betting the 30-year rates are going up. Smart money is betting they're going down. So far, the smart money is been has been right and will be right on this. Uh, I've said this for a long time. And we see here the dumb money is very long oil. And oil is slowing down. The inventories are going to continue to build, probably even more so now with the escalation of the trade war because demand is going to fall due to higher prices. And when you're in a monetary deceleration where the money supply is not growing fast enough to absorb higher prices from say tariffs, then you get lower interest rates because demand falls. Now, does it make sense why President Trump called for a half point basis uh, cut in the federal funds rate and more quantitative easing by the Fed? Yeah, they kind of knew they were gonna do this. So it makes a lot of sense. Uh, looking at the S&P 500. Now, all of a sudden the dumb money is Long the market at the peak, smart money is now short. No surprise, smart money kind of baited them into this rally. Uh, we'll look at gold. You won't see the smart money very often uh, long gold directly. But the dumb money is long gold and gold is falling and we should expect them to back out. We're gonna, hopefully we'll have time to look at some charts. I think gold may actually be at a little lower than I thought. Uh, NASDAQ, the smart money is slightly long, the money is slightly short. And... Interestingly enough, smart money is long uh, small caps. I'm kind of surprised by that. Uh, U.S. dollar, uh, the dumb money is betting on a rising dollar. I think the dollar is headed lower. We'll see if I'm right or wrong on that. Ah, but here's the interesting one. It's volatility. The smart money is as long volatility as they've ever been in history. And you can see this recent move down in the market last week was just a small nudge down volatility. There's a lot of these contracts that can go. 
And when they do, that's going to bring the broad equity market down much, much lower. So let's get switched over to the charts. All right, so here we go. S&P 500 back, let's zoom this out to you know, the prior peak here. And you can see we are now no higher than we were back in January of 2018. We're in this long standing, this is a resistance channel. So this is where you know people have previously sold. You can see selling here and you can see people have bought here. So it is becomes a kind of a battleground, if you will. And today it slid down into resistance, kind of fought back and slid down a little bit. If it does not hold this resistance, it's at least headed down to 2,600 based on where the treasury market is, is headed much, much lower than that. But let's zoom in today and see it came kind of down, bounced off uh, support. I said this is a resistance zone. It's going to be, it's, it's, it's technically, it's actually a support zone, but it's flipping into resistance, as you can see here. So it's supporting support, support breaks down. Now it becomes resistance, can't get up there, becomes resistance, aha, breaks through, nope, still resistance, gets over, briefly becomes support, and now it's back becoming resistance again. Uh, you can see that it definitely closed inside uh, this zone and the battle is only going to build from here. Uh, the question is, can those who believe uh, stock prices had a higher fight out of this and ignore the threats of the trade war, or is the smart money gonna prevail? So the smart money is betting on volatility here, if we can go back two years, going higher. And then when volatility goes higher, stock prices go a lot, lot lower. I mean, a lot lower. So based on what we see from the position of smart money, they're thinking the VIX is gonna break 50 or even higher uh, just because they bought so many volatility positions, positions. Anyway, taking a look at 10 year treasury yields, no surprise. 10-year treasury is headed lower today. Um, again, did find some uh, people who were willing to short it here around 2.4%. But at 2.35, which is coming soon, you are standing on that cliff again. And that cliff says we're going to have a liquidity squeeze and interest rates are headed much lower. If, you, if this doesn't look like a topping pattern, it is. And now there's going to be a battle here at this you know 2.3 2.35 this zone right here because there's a lot of people that that got short this market short the bond market so when you're short interest rates go up and those people since they've been shorting it have now lost a lot of money the question is will they fight back and see this as a second other opportunity or are they tapped out and are going to be forced to become buyers and watch interest rates go a lot, lot lower. That is the big question. All right, one thing I want to look at, let's take a look at gold. Or, you know, oh man, I want to, let's look at emerging markets first. So many things, so little time. So here's emerging markets, which gold actually uh, tends to fall. We're going to extend this to the right. And I said it needed to, you know, just the other day, I said, well, it'd be cool if it kind of broke down here at this $41 price level. Because when I overlay gold, you can see, and we'll just use the ETF since we're gonna be on ETF. You can see very nice relationship here uh, between the two. So this last move up here in gold is probably going to be rejected and gold's gonna head lower. So you can see where things need to be uh, based on the relationship between gold and emerging markets. And this is cool because it gives us just another data point to confirm. So we'll say when we want to buy EEM, which I'm going to want to buy because this is a beautiful pattern to chart. You have a double bottom here. Prices are breaking down. This says the emerging markets are going to, you know, get they're going to get caught up in here initially, and but they ought to retest their uh, double bottom back from November and December. If they hold that and it goes and if we had more time, we'll, we could extend this out and look at it. But if it holds out and goes, but I spent some time looking around, then you've got potentially big bull market breakout and emerging market. What would trigger that? A currency devaluation by China. Aha ha! See, there's more to come to this trade war. We're just, just, just in the beginnings. All right, so let's take a look. So I'd be looking here. There's possible some support here, but this is going to be a, this is going to be the marker for where to buy gold. So now we look at gold mining stocks, and they should be heading lower. They should be headed down to this $18 price range based on that. But here's what I noticed today is silver, and silver leads the direction of gold. 
And now look where silver is. Silver is right back at its December, November, December, and September lows. It's sitting right here at the support level. Now, if silver holds here, it would suggest that gold's gonna make its move down and go. If silver doesn't hold here, and silver is you know, used in industrial, uh, not just for jewelry, but used as an industrial metal. If silver breaks this support level, do you see how fast it's gonna hit this 18 to $20 price range? It's going to be back to its 2015 lows before it took off. If gold made the same move, then it's coming back down to somewhere 2015 and this 13 say $15 price range we'll we'll draw it out a little bit bigger but that tells you the gold miners are coming way down so this to me what i see in silver is very very interesting it also tells us where emerging markets are going but if this breaks down and we'll know this before emerging markets before the gold miners break down if this starts to break then it tells you the biggest opportunity that you've ever seen in the gold mine space is going to get another shot because this setup here is gorgeous and you can go out 20 years and say that you didn't have, have another chance to buy that cheap well you might be getting one really soon and that would be pretty impressive so you can see here it bounced off support so we know our support lines in the right place so what we want to see is if it holds here or folds and if it folds well yeah all these people that were buyers here are going to turn into sellers and prices are going to dump so apologize for going over a minute but we'll be back Wednesday night. Bye now.